Welcome, everybody, to the Making Awesome Podcast, Season 3, Episode 41. Thank you all for coming out. Sorry I'm like 30 seconds or so behind. Uh, one of our staff just called me because he's in the area, and I don't have to ship him apart. He can come by and grab it, which is crazy convenient. So I had to go run and put it outside so he can come and pick it up uh, during the show. A uh, bit of a bummer, but hey, that's what happens from time to time. But, you know, that's part of the deal of running a business and what it all looks like. We're going to be talking all about the necessity for understanding and minimally being able to do some 3D modeling today. Because if you are a maker and you're looking to do maker style stuff, right, uh, you know, parts for other people, working from you know, places like Thingiverse and printables, cults and things will likely only get you so far. So having some knowledge of how to do basic 3D modeling is incredibly important. Before we get too far into that, make sure to leave a like and get subscribed if you haven't. If you're listening back audio only, don't forget you're running about a week behind. So if you do want to watch these live, we tend to do them pretty much every weekend live on YouTube. So if that's your kind of thing, go over and hang out. I got some awesome people, YouTube channel members, and now PayPal. Links, of course, to those are in the description. We've got Mad Cat USA is here, 3D Medic Vince, Jason K4HEF, Saul Rectum, I hardly knew him, Tarsman013 is here as well. Thank you guys for coming out, and let's talk all about 3D design. Because again, you gotta kind of know it. When we first started 3D Musketeers, I uh, didn't know anything about 3d modeling in fact i had very little experience with it barely you know kind of understood tinkercad um this connected why am i disconnected what's going on reconnection successful okay all right well that was weird huh yeah uh obs just said i was disconnected weird all right well we'll start over i guess hopefully everything is okay Okay, apparently it's working on everybody else's side. I hate that this always happens. I'm not dropping packets. It, it, it's these new OBS updates that seem to make it worse and worse and worse. Uh, but I'm just going to work through it. I might just have to start ignoring the chat, because that tends to just turn my ADHD onto 11. And I'm trying very much not to uh, do that, because I like, I like to stay on, uh, on topic where I can. Yeah, Chris Perillo says OBS is fun. That's fair. It is. Uh, how you doing, Chris? But yeah, it is um, it is interesting. And we haven't really found anything that does what we need it to do that OBS does. OBS can record vertical, regular, and do time-coded captions for us, which is amazing. But as Mr. Perillo says, OBS is like changing a nozzle only less hot. <laughs> I feel that. I feel that. We have a really nice OBS setup. Uh, I know some of the Patreon members have seen it where I I can see myself two times. It's it's a whole thing. So if we are still dealing with issues, um, this one might not be a blame spectrum. This one might be blame OBS. Anyways, we're going to get into why 3D modeling is so important. Because when you are looking to just get started, right, especially if you're making parts for others, just going and saying, oh, I'm going to, you know, make this part, it doesn't always work. And while there are a lot of options out there, every one of them seems to have some sort of downside, right? Tinkercad is great, but it's not actual CAD, right? It's not pair itself. You've got FreeCAD, which is awesome if you can deal with its absolutely atrocious UI, which currently I'm not having a great time with, but I am trying. There's Fusion 360, but Fusion 360 pretty much requires you to be online for it to function, or at least you have to be able to log in for it to function. There's Onshape. Onshape is browser-based, so it's great if you don't have a rip-roaring rocking computer. Maybe you use a Chromebook like I do. I have a Chromebook that I leave inside of my car that for some reason now the B key isn't working, but fine. Um, 
you know, I leave a Chromebook in my car because if I'm out somewhere and I need to do some work really fast, often just logging in to like one of our main PCs at my house is not as functional as you might think. And carrying a laptop, like a dedicated laptop all the time is a pain in the butt. Chromebooks are cheap and, you know, for a hundred bucks, if you use it a couple of times as a business, it pays for itself pretty quickly in terms of its, you know, more user-friendly. Weird. Yeah, we are continuing to lose connection. I, I don't know what's going on, guys. Uh, there's literally nothing that I can do. It is it is OBS. I'm sorry. Uh, I can look to see. I'll set my keyframes to zero. Maybe that's what's going on. Or B frames to zero. Uh, is that right? Is that what I want to do? No, keyframes to zero. Because that'll be auto. Um, we'll see if that goes well. Let me know. YouTube will yell at me if something's going on. I'm sorry if you guys got some buffering, but unfortunately there is very little that I can do. Uh, this is an OBS thing. I am not dropping packets. I'm actually pretty stable at the 17 to 39 millisecond ping time to Google. So, yeah. But you know what? I'll leave command prompt open so I can monitor it as well. All right. Back on topic. Every one of these programs has a downside. And that downside is such a pain in the butt. Because none of them really fit the exact use case that you need. You might say, well, Grant, Onshape sounds like a great option. And it is. The thing with Onshape, though, is that unless you pay for it, everything you do is public. And there's nothing that you can do to stop it. And Onshape is very expensive. Like, it is it is expensive enough that we've got some problems right? It's like 15 or $1,600 a year. Don't quote me on that. Someone can go check if they want, but last I checked, it was, uh, it was a lot of money every year. When we look at the side of Fusion, right? Fusion has a free option, although Fusion 360 really wants you to have some sort of internet connection, whether it's a cell phone connection, something that it can ping to its servers. Now, I'm told that it can run in offline mode, but one of our Patreon members checked, and when he rebooted his PC, Fusion required him to log back in. And if you're rebooting a PC, and you reboot it in an area without Wi-Fi, you won't be able to log back in. Which is, uh... It, it's a little challenging, to say the least. And apparently you can't save without it in Fusion 360, which, yeah, kind of a problem too. Right? Tinkercad is going to be the same way. Without internet, they're useless. You have SolidWorks, of course, but SolidWorks is really expensive. You know, Fusion, at least, if you have to buy it, is five to $600 a year for a flat rate, for, you know, the base, the base line. And if you're an educator, you get a really nice package for very little money. SolidWorks is considered one of the industry standards, but its learning curve is a steep line. And it's very difficult. Now, the nice thing that we have with SolidWorks and Fusion is that they can run pretty much the same. Like, the controls can be very similar. Where I find Fusion to be SolidWorks for people that actually know UI and UX, where SolidWorks is just for people that want to design. And then you have ones like Katia and, um, and Topology and... Some of the others that are like, if you have to ask, you can't afford it levels of design. And that's not to say that any one of those is better for you than another. We traditionally tell people to start with Tinkercad. It is free. It is browser-based. It's owned by Autodesk, so it could just randomly disappear. And we don't know what will ever happen to it. Uh... But it's currently free as of recording this video on July 2nd, 2023, so, you know, <laughs> this might age like fine milk, but we'll see. 
<laughs> when we look at Tinkercad, I've taught Tinkercad to five-year-olds and I've taught it to 85-year-olds. It is a great place to start for those that are just looking to get some basic design. The big thing that I don't like about Tinkercad is if I have a circle and I want to turn a tube out of it, right? If I want to make like a tube with a three millimeter thick wall. If I have to change my internal diameter, the exterior diameter will not adjust with it, right? Because they're both individual numbers. In a CAD package like Fusion 360, FreeCAD, or SolidWorks, you would do an offset command. And then when you change the interior diameter, the exterior diameter fall, follows along with it. There's a lot of value to that for me as someone who wants to do things faster. Tinkercad, though, I've always explained it to kids like it's building in Minecraft. And you're just not playing a game, it's building something in Minecraft. And again, it's legally free. So there's a lot of option there as well. Yeah, we keep losing connection. I don't know why. Uh, let me save that. I don't know why we keep losing connection, guys. It seems like... Yeah, I get it. We're buffering again. I, I, I don't know what to do. I'm going to have to remove myself from the, the comments. I'm going to have to, like... I, I cannot stop this problem. This is an OBS problem. I cannot stop the problem. I, I can tell it's clear because YouTube's not yelling at me anymore. I don't know what the problem is. Uh, It's for some reason not connecting. It is disconnecting and reconnecting, disconnecting and reconnecting. I don't know why. It is very frustrating, and it is going to hurt the performance of this stream, which is upsetting because YouTube is a business, and uh, that means I can't act adequately run my business. And that really sucks. That really properly sucks. Um, I don't know why it would be doing this. There's no reason. Let me try the thing that worked on our other PC, which is uh, literally just have it stream more. <laughs> So I'm going from 4,000 kilobits per second to 5,000 kilobits per second. And uh, we'll see. We'll see if that works. Uh, for some reason, that seemed to fix the uh, PC in my garage, which is when I'm standing uh, or on the other set. Uh, that is what we're using out there. So maybe it works in here. We'll find out. Uh, R3DZ says, time to look for a new stream management software. I don't, uh, I don't think there's going to be one that does everything that we need. We need to have a horizontal, we need a vertical, and I need to have captions all being recorded at the same time. And the system that we use for the vertical is really nice. I hit a button, and you'll see often when I look over, over here, I'm looking for the button to click. And when I click that button, it records the previous two minutes of what I just said in a vertical video format that we can then quickly edit down to 45 seconds or less for a short form content. And that greatly increases our productivity as a content creation facility. So um, OBS is probably one of the better ones right now, but it looks like maybe going with the latest hotness from OBS is the wrong answer. And I might want to look at backing down a few revisions uh, to where it was a little bit more stable. But we'll see if pushing uh, more frames per second is a good move. We'll see what happens. Anyways. So why is it important to... Oh, Madcast says doing a behind-the-scenes stream might be a good idea. I mean, it might be. Um, it's kind of weird. But, yeah. Um, now, the thing with Streamlabs OBS, and uh, Ronnie is asking about Streamlabs. The thing with Streamlabs OBS is that uh, it's not designed for this. Like, slabs, or slobs, slobs, is really, really an issue. Um, Stylax says, quit being a Karen and get a new computer. His connection is fine. And that is how you get put in time out. Have a nice day. Because uh, don't call me a Karen. It's my stream. I get to do what I want. And I'm not being a Karen. I'm trying to figure out what the problem is. And sometimes you have to do these things live. And that means, well, you have some issues. Right? There's not much we can do about it. Anyways. It's not about the PC. The PC is a 10700K, 1080 Ti. I don't care who he's calling a Karen. 
Doesn't matter to me. You don't talk like that to people. Not here. Uh, but yeah. You know, got to be nice about people. It's not about... Uh, it's not. It, it's it's a 10-minute timeout. I don't care. Moving on. When you start with 3D modeling, you have to figure out what's important to you, right? What are you trying to do? If you're trying to cover basic stuff, great. Cover basic stuff. Tinkercad will be great for that, as long as you have a dependable Wi-Fi connection. If you don't, your options get limited very quickly. FreeCAD and Blender. Blender is probably one of the better ones right now that's free. And the nice thing is Blender and FreeCAD are both open source. And I appreciate the heck out of that. Because open source really means that they get a lot of updates. Um, we laughed a while back when... Because I I've tried, tried Blender years ago. I had never updated Blender since I tried it. I tried Blender previously in 2017. That's how old my Blender install was. Uh, and do you know what? It still worked. That is the best part. It still freaking worked. That's what I love about open source. It didn't care. It was still running just fine. Blender said, oh, yeah, it's it, we're old, but, you know, we can do this. It's no big deal. And it's like, you know, I want to really... Find the one that works best for you, right? You need to find what works best for you. And yes, as Ronnie says, Blender has come a long way since 2017. I know. We were just curious if it would still run, and it did. Fusion, to me, is the best bet. But if you're just starting out, the jump into thinking with CAD is such a hard thing, right? If you want to make a cube and put a hole in it, in Tinkercad, you bring out a cube, you size the three dimensions, then you bring out a cylinder, you size its dimension, and then you turn it into a hole. That's how you do it in Tinkercad. In Fusion, you have to design a square, put a hole in it, and then extrude it. And if your brain can't process that or, or understand that, that design system or those design parameters, it is a disaster of a time to learn. That was always my struggle. I was pretty darn good with Tinkercad back in the day. And I said, you know what? I am limiting what we are able to do as a company by only understanding Tinkercad. And it's not because I do the design work. Every now and then I do some design work, but it's not a very often thing anymore because we we have engineers that, that do it for me. I don't have to do this. Uh, so there's a value there, but I have to understand at least some basic of it, because if there are parts that are easy to do, I can be able to do them myself. And I laugh because like a lot of times when we get parts in physically that we need to replicate, I'm the one doing it. But right before the stream started, I put a piece out on my front porch for one of our, well, put it on the, the, the porch. Here's my address. Yeah. Good luck. Um, I should check to make sure. Okay, so he's he's in his truck. All right, so we're good. Sorry, uh, I I saw his his te his text message. Now I had to make sure everything was good. But uh, yeah. Anyways, um, you know, again, my goal is to find what works best for you. Right. Um. What I would like to find is a software that lets you do everything, and. Really, a lot of it is just kind of understanding the terminology that makes the most sense. You know, that terminology is what matters a bunch. Because if you don't have that terminology, then it's tough to communicate with the person. Sorry. Uh... There. Non-internet connected. Blender offers a lot of opportunity for very, very little, you know, BS. And where Blender really exceeds is all of its plugins and things that you can add into it. We've seen plugins for parametric modeling inside of Blender. We've seen plugins for sculpting like ZBrush in, inside of Blender. And if you can combine those two in a meaningful way, you've got an opportunity that sits there 
that is really valuable from a business perspective. And it's why when we work with customers, when someone fills out the contact form on our website, you will get a couple of questions. And those questions are to help me better understand where your level of understanding is. Because if I say, well, if we add a fillet to this corner and you're wondering why I want to put a steak on a corner, then, you know, I'm talking in a language that you don't particularly understand. But if you do understand the concept of a fillet, then, and, and you can, you know, answer it like that, then I can talk with a more technical, broad spectrum analysis rather than having to come down to a more, um, let's go with, you know, average Joe terminology, right? We want to round the corner. So yeah, it is an interesting scenario where a lot of it is kind of sizing up the people that you want to work with, as well as sizing up yourself to make sure that it works. And while yes, you can do fillets inside of Tinkercad. There are some plugins and things to make Tinkercad much more useful. Tinkercad will limit your ability to be a designer, period. Because it changing small things in Tinkercad is a, just a nightmare of a time to do. Um, I guess Design Spark was one of them. Yeah, Jazz Cabbage. <laughs> Great name. <laughs> Says I personally use Design Spark Mechanical. I love the ease of use and the and the design freedom it allows. I tried Design Spark Mechanical back in the day, and again, I haven't really tried it since. So my experience with it is probably, you know, 2016, 2017 era, and it was not good back then. But a lot of programs weren't very good back then. So yeah, there. <laughs> Things have changed and, you know, there's all these new ones like Plasticity is one of the latest ones to hit the market that I do want to check out because it's pretty affordable, it looks like. Um, then we've also got, uh, oh, what's the iPad and Android one? Oh, man, I'm missing it. It's a sculpting one. I forget what it's called, but there, there's a sculpting one for iPad and Android. That is supposed to be like a ZBrush competitor, which is great because ZBrush could use some competitors that don't suck. Nomad Sculpt. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Rose Kindred. Nomad. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm told it's great, but I don't have a lot of tablets. And the one tablet that I do often use is an iPad Air 2. I use it because we have a 3D scanner attached to it. It probably won't run Nomad very well. But Nomad is incredibly affordable and can give you a lot of opportunity. But it's not parametric, right? So you have to kind of look at what your target market is. If you're going after engineering style jobs, Nomad Sculpt is not something you should be looking at unless you want to learn it for fun. If you are going after more sculpt -y kind of stuff where you're making, you know, models for D&D &D campaigns or you're doing, you know, pieces on cars and things, while you could do some of that in CAD, oftentimes it might be easier to sculpt it. So understand where that is. And if your niche isn't all in engineering and it isn't all in sculpting, then yeah, having some knowledge to be able to do both can be uh, pretty great. Pretty great. So when we look at all the options, and there are a ton, I think it's really good to try them out and understand it. If for some reason you are the type of person that doesn't want to learn, then you better have people that can do it for you and do it really well to a point that you can communicate that with others, right? That's the kind of thing you have to be able to do. Oh, thanks, Matt. <laughs> he just got the, he just got the connector. I gotta, I gotta text him. Oh, I love that. That was like perfect timing. He called me. If he called me any later than that, we wouldn't have been able to do that. So that was absolutely perfect. Um, oh, Amber's here. Hi, Amber. <laughs> but yeah, if you can't do 3D modeling yourself and you're not really willing to learn, and that can be 
because of a myriad of reasons. You might not have the time. You might not have the skills. You might be afraid, and it's totally okay to be afraid. Then you got to find someone who can do it for you. Now, see, the problem that we run into is that if you can't do it and you're getting requests to do it, chances are you might not be able to communicate it well with your customers if you at least don't understand the specifics behind it, right? Understanding what they're asking for and how, be able to put your mind into that designing aspect. And it's why I believe even just some basic understanding of how it works can lead to a much more prosperous relationship with a customer. Because if they even think that you know what you're doing, even if you don't, you've got a better opportunity there to provide extra services that if you have to shop it out, you have to shop it out. We run into a problem though, which is time. Humans only have 24 hours in a day and there is no amount of Florida snow that will keep you productive. At, when it comes down, you have to pick what you're going to do as a business owner. As a starter, as a hobbyist, you have to choose where you put your time. And if you are not skilled enough to do it, and you want to take the time to learn it, then it is best to partner with somebody that can. That can already do it. That can handle a lot of these problems for you. But one of the big things that you need to find is somebody that's charismatic. We pride ourselves in hiring charismatic engineers. The bulk of our engineers can actually run direct customer communication. They don't need me in the way. They often prefer it because it simplifies things, but they can run directly with the customers. I like that because if I'm busy doing other stuff and can't run interference for some reason, I need them to talk directly with the customer. You don't get that with Fiverr and Upwork. You pay a lot of extra money to do it our way, but you don't get the same amount of problems. And to me, that little extra value that you get out of paying more money is absolutely worth it. The few times that I've needed to utilize that have been great. And things like one of our engineers who lives an hour and a half south of me was in the area. He called me and said, hey, dude, I know we got to do this part. Instead of mailing it to me, why don't I just come by your house and pick it up? Absolutely, come on by and grab it. That is perfect. He was thinking ahead. So thanks, Matt. You're the real MVP here. You have to look at what makes the most sense for you. You might choose that for right now, printing off Cinderwing Dragons is good enough for your business model, and it very well might be. But if you believe that to grow your business, and I believe this is important, you might not, but I believe this is. To grow a business in the maker community, you must have design skills or have a team of designers at your disposal that can communicate with you properly. Look at, this, look at the problem here. The problem here is that you might not be able to communicate in a way the designers understand. And the designers might give you the wrong thing because you don't know how to communicate that issue. If you don't know how to do that, you run into a huge issue of problems here. These are things that I've run into, and it's why I started learning how to, I guess, better communicate. And you might say, well, Grant, you talk all the gosh darn time. How can you be a bad communicator? Well, because what works in my head and how my thinking process works doesn't always work for everybody else. And so you a lot of times have to put yourself into the seat of the other person and say, what are they actually looking for and how can I provide it to them? If you can do that, you've got a lot of things working in your favor. Also, shout out to Chunky Soup, who says, wow, finally made a stream. Long time listener, first time viewer. We should start doing... Um, just for the heck of it, just 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 for the memes, we should start doing long distance dedications. It's Casey Kasem, may he rest in peace. <laughs> Shaper 3D just came up as well. Shaper 3D, S H A P R 3D. 
Um, Shaper 3D is definitely one of those that I want to try to. There are so many design programs that I want to try, but there's so little time. Uh, by the way, we are going to be streaming most of the day on Tuesday, so come hang out. We're going to be doing a July 4th uh, stream, probably hanging out, checking out a laser uh, and a couple of other things, potentially. I don't know. We're going to be doing some streaming on, on Tuesday, so come hang out. Rose Kindred says, yeah, I'm guilty of that myself. I keep confusing fillet, chamfer, and rabbit. I know what I need done, but the exact term always seems to elude me. I feel that with my heart and soul. I will often get it wrong. And sometimes for me to explain it to the staff, I'll have to show them what it looks like. Like, I need this, but I need it not to look like it was done by a five-year-old. Thanks. Because uh, contrary to popular and I want to become really good. But right now, I'm just not. I'm, I'm not. Saul Rectum says, how's that 3D printer grant built on live a few weeks ago? The Flying Bear? Uh, it's doing all right. Uh, haven't had a chance to really mess with it. In fact, uh, I don't want to do two streams in a day. So maybe we'll do another. We want to put a clipper on it at some point. But here's the schedule for streams. We're going to be doing the laser one. And then we're going to be moving to do a, uh, a couple of streams where I reorganize the shop out there. Uh, because FlexiSpot sent me a desk. And... Oh my gosh, I could really use a standing desk out there. It would really help me and my back. Uh, so we're, we have to do some moving of stuff out there. So don't worry. Uh, there's going to be some stuff. I have a 36-watt uh, laser uh, that I want to take a look at on a stream. I also said that I would to the company, so I have to do it. Uh, so we got to do that. And I've been waiting. I've been waiting. Hoo, 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 for some of this hot this focus focus damn it thank you been waiting for that hotness yes i have actual certified laser safety glasses now from thor labs and i am very excited these are not cheap but these are uh proper certified glasses and so uh, now that i finally have these in <laughs> we can start doing those streams because uh, yeah, it's the one thing with diode lasers or lasers in general, you don't want to look at laser with remaining good eye. And while I have some cheapies that should work, they're not certified. Those are. And certification is a big deal to me. So, yeah. Rose Kinder said, ooh, glasses, my luck, I would test them by shining the laser at me and they'd fail. Uh, don't do that. And these are they're $300 a pair. They're good. Uh, Saul says that he's loving his auteur glasses. I don't trust the glasses that come with these lasers. I just don't. Uh, I would much rather spend the money and make sure that I can get it right. Suntro Camper says, don't your lasers have an enclosure? This new one does not. And that is why I am looking to get good glasses. And... Uh, Bami2 says 300 is cheap versus being blind. That is absolutely correct. But it is the most amount of money I have ever spent on a pair of glasses, and I can't even wear them outside. So, yeah. And yes, Miss Victoria does not go in the garage. The last time that that happened, hilariously, I had a time-lapse camera set up. It was when we were reorganizing my garage to build a set out of it. And she got out. And I had set up the time-lapse camera, and I had clicked go was out there so the first like five seconds of the video is the cat like pacing in the garage trying to get back inside the poor thing the poor thing um anyways yeah it's a thing but yeah i i believe that it is good if i'm going to be using lasers on camera even if they have an enclosure to still wear glasses at the end of the day i want to be seen as someone who is pushing safety rather than saying eh it's okay you can get away with it no i don't want to play that game i just want i i'd rather play safe than not because one this hat please and i don't need glasses so like let's not let's not change that so, anyways, I'm going to, oh, Sun Turtle Camera says, what about my lungs? I have a full 
uh, laser thing. Don't worry about it. We have an 80 watt CO2 laser, so I'm going to run that laser inside. I've got a whole thing planned for it. You'll see soon TM. Uh, but we will probably try it without an enclosure immediately, without any, um, you know, smoke stuff immediately because, eh, I've got plants. Work with me, kids. Work with me. Work with me. So what should you start with, right? That one is up to you. Starting with whatever software makes the most sense to you is the one that I would recommend. If you are looking to also get into doing some sculpting in the future, Blender to me is one of the best ones for the money right now because it's free nice. It's very daunting to you because, oh, it's going to take so long to become an expert in it. Then rate. And we want that to be something that you can share with others as well. Part of this whole process is that you can also work with other people on it right tinkercad is great because it's easy once you understand it it is easy to teach to other people that's what i love about it it makes it so easy to work if you don't have that opportunity that can be a pain in the ass we want to make sure that we have the right opportunities to also afford others in the industry as well. Because I believe that as we get good at something, part of it is also giving back to others that are just starting, right? We kept up with this YouTube channel because I know I'm not the only one that wants to do this stuff. I know that I'm not the only one that wants to do a business like this. And even though I said I'm not going to be talking about business topics for a while, I'm totally talking about business topics again because you guys seem to really like those. So we're going to keep doing some business topics. Next week's topic is already done. Um, so, yeah, that one's that one's going to be a, a little bit hard for me, but I think it's going to be a good one. It, it, it's about uh, employee retention. So I think you guys will enjoy that one. Uh, but, but it's because we have a staff member leaving that day. So it'll be kind of cool for us kind of to talk about it and... I don't know, maybe if they're lucky, I can get them to come on the show for a bit. That would be kind of cool. I don't know if they'd want to do that, though. We'll see. But programs are all about your level of, well, the Sisyphus school of design, right? How much do you want to push that boulder up the hill? And with programs like ZBrush and Blender, you can push that boulder up that hill as long as you want. As long as you want. And you will probably never get to a point where you're having a problem. It will always, always have room to grow. Fusion 360, right? They're constantly adding and removing uh, features, right? I just recently learned how to do sheet metal inside of Fusion. And that's really cool. Not that it ended up being something that I needed to know, but now that I know how to do it, it's not something that scares me anymore. It's something that I know how to do. And sure, I'm still learning it. I don't really understand all the perspectives of it. But I watched a YouTube video. I followed along. I designed the thing that I needed. And I verified that it worked by uploading it to Send, Cut, Send. Because they were going to be who we were choosing to do the part with. But then we just found a cheaper off-the-shelf solution. So, yay. Hydration. All right. So what are some basic skills that you should work on first? That, again, all comes down to. Now, I'm going to move. I will give you all my experience with ZBrush and why I won't use it. I opened up ZBrush. It was a totally legit copy of ZBrush, I swear. And uh, opened it up and looked at it, and I could not find file. You know, the one that's supposed to be in the top left. Yeah, uh, ZBrush's menu at the top of the screen is in alphabetical order, so file somewhere near the middle. Why would anybody do that? What kind of UI UX designer said that is the right thing to do? Whoever they are, I want to find them. 
and pour a very small amount of water into their shoes. Because you're wrong. It is not the way that it goes. And while there are actual ways to fix that, right? There are plugins that fix it. It's just so frustrating to me because if that's the first thing that I see in your UI UX, I am completely turned off from ever learning your program. With that being said, ZBrush is one of the most powerful sculpting tools on the planet. Oh, I did just drop a packet. Huh. And with ZBrush being what it is, there is very little competition for it out there, period. ZBrush is pretty much in a, in a game of its own, right? When it comes to doing sculpting. And while Shaper 3D, uh, Plasticity, uh, the one that I forget about, Nomad, there are some others that are trying to come into its territory. They're still the game. Now, I will give a middle finger to Maxon because you all are terrible. Uh, you... You completely change the pricing of ZBrush, and it is a complete money grab, and I hate you for it. Um, and it's why I have such a hard time recommending ZBrush now, because of how expensive it, it is. It used to be a one-time purchase, and you would just get updates. Now that Maxon bought ZBrush, they went to, of course they did, a uh, SaaS model, software service, right? Where you're paying for it monthly or yearly, which is terrible. That's just so terrible. And that means that people that are trying to make a living off of this, their expenses for the software just went up. And that means they have to raise their prices and design houses have to raise their prices. It's just, ugh! It's not a lot of fun. So when we look at design, I say you should probably get the basics of how to draw a sketch, how to extrude, how to do some fillets, and pretty much you can get by with a lot of stuff with just those few skills. Now, I've done some streams with Fusion 360. I want to start learning FreeCAD again to compare the two. We'll see if it's ever something we do a video on. Because once again, I am scared out of my absolute utter mind of kind of struggling on stream again. It is uh, it is not a lot of fun as a content creator to just ride a struggle bus when you know there's like 30 people watching you and laughing at you. So, you know, it's something that I uh, don't like doing. But it might be interesting to give Free Cat another shot because it was uh, not a fun time the first time that I tried it. But it is one of the only CAD packages, like dedicated CAD, that is free and open source. And I guess they now do CAM as well, which is cool, objectively cool, and so I can't hate it. I think really, though, the skills that you need first more align with the nomenclature and how to talk in CAD. Right? When somebody says, oh, I have, I have a file, you say, cool, send it to me, but you don't know what to ask for, then we've got ourselves a problem. Like, you need to edit it. An STL file is the wrong file to get. You would want a step file or an IGES file or SLDPRT, that's the uh, SolidWorks version, and the F3D file, which is the Fusion 360 version. You would want those files, not an STL or an OBJ. You want something that is still within parametrics rather than not within parametrics. Things to know and learn. That, to me, is more valuable initially than spending a bunch of time trying to get competent. Because someone that still kind of struggles with basic stuff, even I wonder if I'm competent in design. And that's okay. One, because I've built up a team of engineers that are competent and who are not so good, is a really important thing to do as well. So, what about just outsourcing it, right? Grant, I can just pay somebody else to do it. I'll just go to Upwork, I'll go to Fiverr, and I'll just pay somebody else to do it. Yeah, you can. 
And in fact, when you get busy enough, you should be bringing in people to do it. I'm not a huge fan of Fiverr and Upwork. Both of those places very often prioritize price over quality. 10 will do a significantly better job, like majorly significantly better job. And that is something that I think you should be looking into. Because, yeah, a little bit of extra price to get way better in terms of the quality of work is there. But if you're looking at a sea of people that know what they're doing, don't know what they're doing, and other than looking at reviews and prices, which can take a lot of time, you run into this problem of, I don't know who to work with. And then you have to worry about, you know, lead times and change orders and how fast things can get done. And what if, you know, how do you reach them? I said, all of this is not worth it to me. I don't want to outsource like that. I want to hire in the right people that can work with us directly. People that I can meet. Maybe not in person, but at least online. People that I can talk to, that I can call when I have a problem. People that will communicate with me. And while I'm not their only client, I work in that as well. I don't like the way that Fiverr and Upwork do things. It really upsets me. Because it plays into the aspect of we just want things cheap. And I can promise you that when it comes to design, cheap is bad. Affordable is fine. Cheap is bad. And every now and then, there is an exception to the rule. Someone that has a lot of skill, that is trying to get a foothold, so they come in real cheap to undercut everybody, and they do a great job, and they just slowly raise their prices until they hit a level to where they're happy. And, you know, I totally say kudos to you for making it happen. But the vast majority of the cheap people out there are likely going to have some gotcha that might make it not worthwhile. It's why we've talked about it in the past, that you are likely too cheap and think, oh, you should lower your prices. I don't care. You are worth money. Your time is worth money. And if all you're going to do is say, well, I can get more business if I charge less money, no, you'll get more business, but you're going to make less money overall. Again, we talked about this. You double your price and you lose half of your business. You're making more money. Think about it. So, yeah, you could outsource, but don't always go for the cheapest. I would pretty much guarantee that every single person here lives in a close enough proximity to a college that offers engineering to go down there and find people. Whether you talk to, um, you know, the, the job place, and I totally forget what it's called, like career jobs can get jobs. These are the kind of things where you should be calling and getting a hold of. That is what you will need. You will need to communicate with those people because they're the ones that bring you the people to help make what you need possible. It's how we have uh, a staff member from Ringling. I went to Ringling and said, hey, I need help from students and I'm willing to pay for it. Okay, cool. Here's where you can put a job posting. And a lot of it is on Handshake. I hate Handshake. I think other platforms should you want to. Often walking in the door, getting a meeting and sitting down with somebody is way more valuable than just going to handshake and posting a job. Because guess what? If you don't like using it, neither do the students and they don't go there very often. I find it a lot easier to build a relationship with somebody personally and work with them in that regard than I do when I just, you know, do the online route. Putting a job on LinkedIn is useful, but you're going to get a lot of crap that you have to weed through. Putting it on social media is fine if you've got a big enough push and a big enough audience for it to matter. Often is about building those relationships. And yeah, if you're trying to find those designers, they got to know who you are too. 
the thing that we found most helpful is to ask people about their family. Because maybe their family members, a brother, sister, cousin, aunt, uncle, father, whatever, mother, would potentially be able to also benefit your company. And bringing in multiple people that already know how to work together. Oh, dude, it's so great. It is so great. At one point, we had three people from the same family on our team, which is really cool. And they all did different jobs. It was really, really cool. Rose Kindred says, good tip, small business departments at colleges often receive grants to help new small business also. They can. There are often um, packages that occur on a county level where you can hire people at a reduced rate because they come from a disadvantaged area or whatever it might be. But as someone that has tried programs like that, be very careful and do ask them, you know, if they have the skills. If they're coming in on like this OJT on the, on the job training program and they don't have any design skills, do not hire them as designers. I'm sorry. You're a business. You have to look at making sure that you can get the people that know what they're doing. It is not your job to train somebody how to do design work, especially if you don't know how to do it yourself. Hire the right people and pay them well. But you, if you are going to outsource, better have the knowledge to speak CAD because you're going to need to do that with your answer back. I can often go to our staff and just ask the question as I'm on the phone with the client. It's a pretty easy thing for me to do. Well, it's not internet, it's OBS. I don't know how to solve this problem. And it, it sounds like I'm going to have to talk to OBS about this because uh, it is definitely a problem. So, um, yeah, something ain't right. Uh, oh, well, and it might if it was redesigned. Well, I mean, the 3D model that you that you downloaded is probably an STL file and modeling off of it is... Uh, not always the easiest thing to do. So, grain of salt that one, of course. And yeah, you've got a lot of opportunity and a lot of options in the market. Why? Because every company that is out there has a different value point, right? What is FreeCAD's value point? It's literally in the name. It is free. It is open source. It is not great in most aspects but it's crazy powerful if you can get through it's objectively not the best ui and ux fusion 360 is free for hobbyists it's there's a startup plan it's free for educators um and if you do have to pay for it it's sub 600 dollars a year right now so it's relatively affordable it has a cloud feature, which is very helpful if you have a team of people that you're working with. Although the cloud feature is only available via educator or paid versions. It is not available on the free version. So, you know, be aware of that. You've got Blender, which is open source. It is free. Blender, to me, blends a lot of uh, the opportunity of both programs like ZBrush, Fusion 360 and others. It has a steep learning curve, but because it is free and open source, there are tons and tons and tons of tutorials out there. And while Let's Play Macho likes Inventor more than Fusion 360, and I agree, I like it more as well, Inventor is closer to SolidWorks than Fusion and Inventor is much closer to the price of SolidWorks than Fusion is as well. SolidWorks is considered the industry standard still to this day. It doesn't get a lot of UI and UX updates, but, you know, Dassault Systems, which is the company behind it, does often update it. It is, well, it is the plain white button up t shirt of CAD. It ain't pretty. It can work, it's classy, and it's a common in engineering businesses, right? 
where Fusion is the Hawaiian shirt on a Friday kind of deal, right? They uh, like to mix it up a little bit. They'll just randomly change the UI and UX because middle fingers to you, homie. You better learn how to take care of it your way. Blender, uh, we already did Blender. Tinkercad is uh, going to feel like playing with Lego when you first start, and you're going to feel like I'm too smart for this. And then you realize it's got some amazing things that no other CAD package does well, like being able to take a 2D sketch and extruding it into a 3D model that you can then move into a different program. It's really easy to do that. And Tinkercad is pretty powerful. And the fact that it's 100% browser-based and free, for what it gives you, it's great. When you look at something like Onshape, Onshape is powerful. They sponsor a lot of content creators. I'm not on that list yet. Uh, Onshape is free. It is browser-based, so if you're running a potato for a computer or like my OBS is currently running, then it's a great option. But... If you don't pay for it, your files are public and there is nothing that you can do about that. Now, I know some people will just put, you know, completely random names on their files so they're hard to find. And pretty much that guarantees, you know, obscurity on the file. But I wouldn't utilize that as my way of obscuring the file itself. It would be better if you are looking to do it as a business to pay for Onshape Onshape is very expensive. It is made by former Dassault Systems people, right? They came from SolidWorks and they said, we need an online system to do it. ZBrush is a program built for masochists by masochists. And every single person that I've talked to that uses ZBrush does not disagree with that statement. <laughs> You've got Shaper 3D, Plasticity, and Nomad Sculpt. Those are all... Uh, tablet based ones we're using like an ipad and an apple pencil uh or an android tablet and something like that there are a lot of value to those i don't know i don't know much about them to be very clear i don't know much about them and i think that they have a lot of opportunity for growth and a lot of ability to take away legitimate business from companies like maxon and, and zbrush right maxon and zbrush we went over that earlier so yeah, you've got opportunity here to play where you are most comfortable. And I'm sure I am just scratching the surface of softwares that are out there. You have to find what best fits you. It is often that people use Tinkercad to start because, well, it's cheap, it's easy, it's browser-based, and you can teach to kids. Tinkercad's great. Thomas is asking if I use any special hardware like a Space Mouse for CAD. I do. Um, I buy them used. So I, I buy the Space Pilot Pro. Uh, up until uh, 3D Connection killed the driver for it. I hate you for doing that, by the way. Um, not, not a huge fan. Oh, I'm getting an encoder overload. Wait a minute. That might be my problem. I just saw that it's throwing... An encoder overload. All right, hold on. Hold on. Let's let's just turn down what we're sending. Let's see if that works. Hopefully that works. We'll see if we if we lose it again. It's not a bitrate thing. Um I think we're just doing, which is funny because we're not doing a lot of processing. On the computer side, I'm using 30% of my CPU and 30% of my GPU and about 25% of my internet upload speed. So, like, on the service, we should be fine. So, I don't know. Hey, Duff. How you doing? What was I talking about? I totally forget. I am so far off track now, I don't even remember. You should still like the video. Uh, Thomas said he restarted his client and it worked flawless. I just updated to the brand new 29.1.3, so maybe that could be it. Clearly need an Intel GPU for AV1 encoding. <laughs> no. <laughs> but yes. 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 Uh, no, no, not, not doing any of that. Oh, yes, Space Mouse. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yes, thank you, Shishuda. 
Space Mouse. I love them. Um, it is really nice for us. Um, they're not expensive if you find them used. Uh, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, eBay, all great places to find them used. Uh, one of our staff got a space, uh, the Space Mouse Enterprise, the big one with all the buttons and crap uh, for like 40 bucks on Facebook Marketplace. So don't be afraid to lowball people. The worst they're going to tell you is to F off. So, you know, if they're willing to take it, why pay more than you need to? I like them. Some people don't. We have a few staff that do not like just the, the finickiness of it. And they prefer to use the shift, the control, the alt keys, and the mouse. I feel lost when I don't have it. And in fact, I have one that I take with me when I'm on the road and I need to do CAD work. Um, so there is, you know, some stuff there. I really would love to see CAD in VR because I feel like if I was able to just move things with my hands and say, I want to put a circle there, you know, three millimeter hole and then punch it and then push it through. That would be so easy. Like I'm not a game developer. I'm, I'm, I don't have that skill, but I feel like that would be pretty cool. Shoshuda says they use their MMO mouse with 12 side buttons. Razor Naga gang. I had a Razor Naga. I have no idea where it went. It's gone. But the idea of VR CAD has always been in my mind. And I tried out one years ago. And it just fizzled, right? They had so much. Oh, go to hell, Mad Cat. Uh, they had so much opportunity. And it just didn't work. I don't know why. It just didn't. I really, really like that idea because I think at that point, it becomes a lot easier for the average person that is trying to learn CAD and design work to design something, put on a headset and draw it in the air. I know that that is much more complicated to design though. Benjamin Smith says, my theory for VR CAD experience is a big part of the AR VR interface race that's seriously starting to pick up pace. That all rhymes, and I'm upset with how well that rhymes. Uh, but yes, I think that the first company to come out with something like that will change, and it be good, will change the way that a lot of us look at 3D modeling. Now, I don't have a VR set up, and quite frankly, I don't even know if my PC could handle it. But, if you could integrate it into something like an Oculus, or whatever the hell they're calling it, Meta, now, if you could integrate it into that, now, hold the phone, that's a game changer, where it could be a standalone system, and not need to be connected to a PC. I would pay... I'd pay 500 bucks for that. I would easily pay 500 bucks for that because if that means I can design better, it's worth every penny to me. I believe though that CAD and understanding how to do basic 3D modeling is imperative to anybody looking at starting a 3D business. If all you can do is print stuff, cool, but you're going to limit the opportunities for your business. And often that limits you from doing jobs that bring in real money, like big money, money. I'm printing parts. You can actually see some of the outlines of them behind me that we had to design for the client. Each of those parts is 250 US dollars. They don't take very long to print. They take like 20 hours to print. Um, it's good money. That's really good money for clicking print and going since they order like 30 of those a year. So there's a lot of opportunity. If we couldn't design something like that, we'd be stuck in the dirt. Missing that client while one of your competition who can do it will get that client instead. I don't want you to think that 
oh, because you don't have design skills, you're not ready to start a business. You are, but you have to look at prioritizing some of that time into designing. And while that's not easy, and it's daunting, and it's scary, and in some cases, it can be expensive, it is up to you for how often and how skilled that you actually want to get. With a lot of programs out there being as cheap or free as they are, Shaper 3D, Nomad Sculpt, even Plasticity at $300, Fusion 360 at $550 if you need to be in a paid tier, Blender, free, FreeCAD, free, Tinkercad, free. The only excuse that I can think of right now is you just don't have the time. And if that's the case, find a way. I know for me, a lot of the time, not having time is due to poor time management. Trying to juggle all the stuff that we're working on and not get confused and lose things the way I currently do. That's a me problem. Not a you problem. It's a thing, but it's still a problem. I don't like it. But I've got a lot of different pots that are stirring up in the old brain box here. Everything from <clears throat> everything from moving the business to a different location to expanding our content offerings, rebuilding my sets, another set. The Making Awesome Academy, The Politician, and all the stuff that comes along with that. Things like the video ideas that we have, the products that we're working on. How about merch? If you're a part of our Patreon Discord server, which is also available to YouTube channel members and PayPal, you guys saw that we had a meeting this past Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, where we live designed some merch. That's coming up soon, TM. It's part of the process, but a lot of that comes down to, I don't know where the hell to start most of the time. And if that's what you're dealing with too, I find it's good to sit down and just stop, wait, let all the BS quiet. Eventually all the noise in your head quiets down and you're able to say what is the best use of my time it's why we made the decision that we made we found that it is a easier trajectory for us for my time to focus more on content than to focus on client meetings and look at just kind of adjusting who we work with and why is that bad? No. But there are reasons for everything that we do. I really like making videos. We're going to start coming out with paid classes. In fact, we were going to start filming 26 hours of a master class on how to do product development. But we realized that class is going to be around $1,000. And it'll be uh, 26 hours. 51 classes, $1,000. We realized it is going to be really tough to get people to help and spend that kind of money without knowing who we are. And while we could send them to the YouTube channel, a lot of the YouTube channel doesn't really matter for what they want. And this is all thanks to my business mentor who said, hey, Grant, you're being an idiot. Why are you trying to put out an amazing, you know, beautiful, perfect thing? you should be looking at doing something smaller. He said, look, you want to charge $1,000 for this big class. What if you did three longer classes that was a 100,000 foot level rather than a 1,000 foot level and you charge 50 bucks for the three classes? You could easily get 20 people to sign up for that much easier than you could get one person to sign up for your $1,000 classes. And if you price it accordingly, we've got some ideas there. We can then build out so that those people that do the $50 can easily be moved into the $1,000 should they want it. 
there is more value there than there is in me running printers all the damn time, right? Dealing with the bamboo. If I still can't figure this thing out because we are having some more issues, I'm just going to either give it away or we're going to sell it because I just can't be bothered anymore. It's fun and it gets us clicks and it's good for the channel, but it's not good for my mental health. So you have to look at and say what makes the most sense for you. For me, my time is not best being used sitting at a computer designing. My time is best being used of where and how that I can bring in the most amount of money for this business, period. That's how it is. Dimebag says sell the Prusa and get a, or sell a bamboo and get a Prusa. Uh, I've got enough Prusas. We're, we're good. We don't need another Prusa. Um, actually right now we don't need any more printers. In fact, we are going to be, uh, taking some printers offline and, uh, doing a Joel telling style, uh, giveaway, come trade me something for it, but you'll have to be local to the Tampa Bay area to do that. So I'm not going to ship anything. It'll only be for local people. Sorry. I ain't going to ship it too much work. And then whatever people don't come and pick up, will get donated to a, uh, local makerspace. People will benefit from that, and it gives me more of my garage back. So, sorry, Allison. <laughs> so where does that leave us, right? Where are we left with everything involving design work? It really does come down to what is most comfortable for you. If you do want to start making money with 3D printing, you need to have some level of understanding. And if that means you have to, to delay the launching of your business another month or two while you, you know, take some intensive classes on YouTube and you learn all about it, you get some basic skills, do it. Take the time and invest in yourself. You need to. Because if you don't now... One of your competitors is going to come along, see that weakness, and take advantage of it where you won't be able to stop them. And as a business, that is a real problem. You don't want to have that happen. Click. Thank you. Jeez. Also looks like we've been a lot more stable. Let me know if we've been more stable. I haven't noticed anything on my side, but it looks like we've been... Uh, much more stable. So, A+. Plus. Dimebag Coin says that, that they're impressed that Shishuda did an MK4 assembly because it looks like a lot. And it is. But the nice thing is with Prusa is that the manuals to assemble them could not be easier. They even tell you when to take breaks and have some gummy bears. And if Prusa has thought of this process of rewarding yourself along the way then you know maybe it's something that you should actually do. You got to make sure that you take care of yourself in this process. I know I am talking as someone that doesn't really take care of themselves. All right? This is very much a do as I say, not as I do kind of thing. And that's fine. But I can tell you, if you don't really treat yourself, you come into a habit of not really being able to reward yourself for when you do well, and you only punish yourself for when you do things wrong. And that is a real quick way to find yourself into burnout. And I know a lot of you are going to sit here and say, well, Grant, I'm a little neurodivergent. Hi, I am too. And that's okay. It seems like this industry seems to collect uh, neurodivergent individuals and that's totally cool i love it actually it's it's pretty great these are my people and i commend you for wanting to learn more but we know the big problem with your our, our adhd people here is that you'll get enough of an understanding of something to where it becomes boring and you move on to the next thing because you're not challenging yourself over and over again we're going to start to do more videos on practice to do a series all about 
like practical 3D printing and what that looks like. Things like uh, a DIY or buy on curtain rod holders, because uh, ones in the store suck. They're ugly. They don't look very good. And, uh, you know, honestly, they're not the greatest. I'm going to do a single pass as well. Let's see if that fixes it. I believe that there is opportunity when you continue to challenge yourself. I find that when I challenge myself, I enjoy something more. It's not just a, I'm going through the ropes, right? I'm doing something because it matters to me. Not just because it matters to somebody else. I prefer to do it that way. It's more beneficial to me. It is more what I like. You have to look at and say what best fits your style. What best fits you as a person. And, what's best, and what best fits your business. Now those of you that don't want to start a business that just want to learn. CAD, do it. But if you're not going to do it for money, you've got a lot of opportunity to take more time. I think those that want to do it for a business kind of need to load it as much as they can to the front, right? Learn it now, quick. If that means I have to delay doing business for people for two weeks while I just shut up and focus, great. Do that. Do that. That's my preference. But it's not always easy. And I don't want you to sit there and say, well, I just don't get it, so it means I'm never going to get it. No. You don't have to fully understand how to do CAD to be someone that understands it. Because remember, a lot of the people that you work with won't understand it either. As long as you can bridge that gap between engineers and business, you'll be fine. If you need to, hiring people to help out, there is a value to that that you might not understand immediately. But when you get really busy and be like, God, I wish I had some help, the desire to outsource will be there. We recommend that you start by still keeping yourself having some work and then the rest of it goes to somebody else. It kind of gives you a trial period where if they screw up, you can pull all the work from them and you can still get it done. And as you get and build that relationship with that person, whomever it may be, to a point where you can just offload all of it. It is not the easiest thing on the planet. Especially when it is trusting somebody else with your business. It's really difficult, in fact. And that's why I don't recommend the Fiverr, the Upworks, and that kind of stuff. Because it's not always easy to trust somebody. But it is really easy to slowly work somebody in and see if they kind of fit. You got to find a way that makes it work for all parties involved. How? I don't know. Each case is different. There is a lot to it. Maga says I'm dropping again. Dude, I have my bit rates back down to 4,000. I'm not uploading a full stream anymore. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot. Dan Brunimer former podcast guest says YouTube university is used by even the most seasoned CAD users. Lots of extremely high quality instruction, especially in SolidWorks and Fusion 360. Yep. I 100% agree. I have learned so much by just going to YouTube and trying it, putting in the right search terms, finding a video and watching it. I firmly believe that in today's day and age, you can learn everything that you need to learn about something on YouTube. 
The reason that people pay for classes is that they don't necessarily want to do all the research. They want someone to present it to them in a way that they understand. That's why classes work. That's why college exists. You can go to a library and learn all you need to know about anything that you want. You can get all the certifications. You can take the test. You can do all of that stuff all at a library. You might not need to go to special libraries, bigger ones, state libraries, country libraries, but you can do all of that yourself. The reason that we choose to go to college is that we have people that are experts in their fields teaching us what we need to know. We get a nice fancy piece of paper that proves that we did it. While I say we have a team of engineers, I don't know honestly how many of them are actually engineers. They know what they're doing. And to me, that's more important. I look at it very similar to how I look at doctors versus nurses. And it's not just that, you know, my better three quarters is a nurse. But I often find that the nurses know way more than the doctors. Because unlike the doctors, the nurses have to always be up on the most up-to-date protocol, period. Right, because the nurses deal with the, you know, they're the boots on the ground and the doctors are the commanders that come in and take a look at everything and say, yeah, this is fine. You know, I've got a good friend who's an ARNP and his knowledge vastly exceeds that of most doctors that I know. And that is not to shame on doctors. I want to be very clear. Those doctors are heavily specialized. Like an anesthesiologist probably won't know how to do brain surgery. And while nurses won't probably know how to do either of those things, in the event that a nurse needs to give some sort of sedative, they can probably do it. They'll have to call and make sure it's legal and the right amounts potentially. But a nurse, be the nurse, don't be the doctor is kind of what I'm trying to say. I, I think I'm moving away from the the value of that metaphor, but be the nurse, the medical assistant. Don't be a doctor. Not to say you shouldn't go get a doctorate if you want to be a doctor. That's fine. I support that. I'm saying being the one expert on one specific thing might not have as much value as you think. Sentinel Camera says, you cannot learn everything on YouTube. Would you trust a YouTube doctor? There are quite a few doctors that are on YouTube that are pretty damn good at what they do. Um, and, you know, honestly... Well, see, medical advice is, is a fun legal problem that you can't give. You can't give medical advice on the internet. You can't give legal advice on the internet. So those are things that, yeah, okay, you can't learn about that on YouTube. Just say it. I understand that it's not exactly the most accurate metaphor, the most accurate statement, but I think the gist of what I'm trying to say makes a lot of sense. So, sorry if that is a little bit further off topic than what we might have wanted, but I, I think what I'm trying to say makes a lot of sense, right? You as a business owner, while you can focus on one very specific thing and be very good at that one specific thing, I would personally rather see you be good at a lot of other things as well. Have your expertise if you want. Once you master it, it's time to start learning something new. Always keep learning something new. Stay on top of what you're doing. And when it comes to design programs, once you're comfortable with one, I promise you there's another one left for you still. Try it. It's pretty awesome. I really want to get into Nomad shaper plasticity and some of the others and yes theoretically there will be videos on it right but i know i'm not an expert and that's actually kind of cool i have to play how's the right way to say this most people see me as an expert right so i have to say that i'm an expert 
But I firmly believe that those who are actually experts don't say they're experts. But if I say I'm just an average person, people argue with me that, no, no, you know what you're doing. Well, I do know what I'm doing. I'm not an expert. Dan Brunimer, who's in the chat, he is an expert on binder jetting. He might not think that he is, or he might not say that he is. Other people do, and I know I'm not the only one. I know what I know. And I know that I'm always going after something new. Something interesting, something fun, something unique, something special. And if you work toward that as well during your process of design, you too can get to a point where you are actually finding your balance in business. Um, Tech Z Tech says that they're personally trying to break into photogrammetry, and lordy, that's a deep well. Oh, homie, it's way deeper than you think. Photogrammetry is a whole bag of chips that I have built photogrammetry arrays. 70 plus DSLR photogrammetry arrays for scanning people. And while it is really cool, because you can get some awesome, awesome quality data from it, it is crazy expensive, a pain in the ass to build, wiring sucks, you need multiple computers, you need God's own wall sockets because you will use so much power and everything must be triggered at exactly the right amount of uh, of delay man even a couple of cameras being off by a few milliseconds and the person moves can really mess with the quality of a scan of a photogrammetry array now you're probably not looking at photogrammetry arrays you're likely looking at single camera photogrammetry setups and there are some really great setups for that but yeah the well is deeper than you think it absolutely is for 3d modeling right I see the work that one of our staff does in ZBrush, and I am amazed. I see work that Wexter and Fotis and Chelsea, some of these others do in these programs, and I'm amazed. Thinking, I don't think that I'm even close to being good enough to do that. Maybe one day I could be. Who knows? For right now, I'm just going to keep trying. That's all we can do. Find what works best for you and go with it. If it's free, try it. You have no risk to try something that's free other than your time. And if you're just getting started, time is probably something that you have a lot of. And if it's not, figure out why. For me, I'm not as functional as I used to be because of the pain. The chronic pain is a real son of a gun. And it means that I can't function and run my business the way that I used to. It means that things that used to take 20 minutes can take two to three hours. It's like, you know, I can't mow my grass. I have two acres of land, so it's a little different. But like, I can't easily mow my grass without losing the entire next day of productivity. Streaming outside on the set, the standing or sitting on that crappy stool that's out there, is so good. So, yeah, sometimes you have those modifiers in the progress that slows things down or in some cases speeds it up. Don't be afraid to say that you need help. Don't be afraid to say you need to take it slower. But you need to always make sure that you communicate that with everybody involved. If you told someone that it's going to be two weeks to get something done and all of a sudden it's like four weeks, as soon as you know that you need more time, you need you got to ask for it. It's better to ask for more time before you've missed your deadline than after. If I can, you always show up toward the end of my streams. How you doing? Pez Liz is here too. How you doing, Liz? I want, I want you as a person that is looking to start a 3D printing business or someone that is looking for that next step to just try something. Just try a design software. If you are really apprehensive about it, 
Tinkercad is a great one to start with. Legally free, browser-based, easy enough that you can teach it to kids. That's a great one to start with. I then moved into Onshape because at the time, Onshape would allow you to keep private models even if you didn't pay. Now, that's not the case. So I would go from Onshape to Fusion. If you are a huge advocate for open source, then you can try Blender and both of those again. I will tell you that I'm apprehensive about it because... I don't really have the time to dedicate to it proper. I have some time, but not as much as I really want to spend, if you understand. I believe that there is a lot of value out there and programs that most of us haven't even tried yet that can be incredibly valuable to the work that we do in this industry. And if you find some, let me know. Because, yeah, I want to know about them too. There is a lot of opportunity out there. You just have to know when it's time to take it. And if you're wondering when is the best time to start learning, it's now. If you haven't started, the answer is now. I hope this helps. It will help your business. Absolutely will help your business to be able to better communicate with others, whether it's engineers, business owners, members of the general public, knowing the terminology, knowing how to describe it, and knowing how to quickly disseminate it into something that a lay person can understand is incredibly valuable and will help you stand out amongst your competition that all they can do is just print stuff they find on printables, right? I am not an expert, but I will do what I can to help. If you have questions, let me know in those comments. And maybe we do start doing some sort of like series on design softwares. I don't know. Always, I'm not a designer. And I'm a lot like the rest of you guys too. Who knows? As Dan Brunimer says, the best day to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best day is today regarding skills learning. I 100% agree. If you hadn't started yet, now's the time. It's also the time to leave a like. Get subscribed if you haven't. Have to always throw that in toward the end. But I hope you found this valuable. I should have linked all these things that I talked about in the description, but I have forgotten. So I will update the description of the video to make sure that it has the links to all of the places that we've talked about. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Be safe on the 4th if you are in the States. Please don't blow your fingers off. Just please. And, you know, as nice as Amber is, you never want to visit Amber in a professional setting. She's an ICU nurse. For those of you that are medical workers that are working over the 4th, good luck and Godspeed. I hope you deal with a lot less trauma than you normally do. And for those of you with animals, it's scary, scary boom, boom day coming up. Comfort them where you can. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Season 3, episode 41. All about why you need to know how to design. Take care.